My daughter came to me a few, few years back, maybe six, seven years ago. I don't know. She said, she's very prophetic. She said, I heard the Lord say, tell you to go back and read the story of David and Goliath. Study that story. God wants to talk to you there. And I didn't. I mean, I just thought, well, I know everything you know about that story. I've heard that story for 60 years. I didn't tell God because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I didn't want him to know what I was thinking. <laughs> Bless his heart, I didn't want to hurt him. <laughs> so I went back and looked at it again. Saw it from a completely new perspective. I'd never seen it. And that is that David conducted that whole battle based on his history. In fact, he said, when well, his brother mocked him, he said, who do you think you are, you punk? Because David was an outcast. The reason he wasn't invited to the lineup, the prophet called to anoint one of his, Jesse's sons to be the next king. The reason David wasn't even called is because when the passage says there, there's the youngest one, the word doesn't literally mean the youngest there. It means the, the, the misfit, the worthless one. Many Hebrew scholars believe David was their half-brother. That he was a product of David and, I mean, of Jesse and one of the handmaids, the servers, servants. And as such, he had no inheritance with the brothers, so he wasn't invited. And one of his brothers, when he came to the battlefield, starts asking questions about this giant and why isn't anybody taking him on? Why is this man being allowed to mock God, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And he said, who do you think you are? And David's response was, is there not a cause? And cause there is a very, um, it's really an interesting and strong Hebrew word. It, it can mean several things. So it, it, it may not mean there, and certainly doesn't only mean, isn't there a cause here worth dying for, fighting for, maybe dying for. The word means, among other things, history. David literally may have been saying to his brother, is there not a history? Isn't there, isn't there, a, aren't there some promises in our past? That give us the power, the strength, the authority, the favor, the blessing of heaven that we need in order to deal with this giant. He may have been referring to a future history. Not just one to connect to, but one to write. History is going to record what we do here today on this battlefield. So the story begins by telling us, you can go read it later, it tells us the location of the battlefield, a couple of unknown places. I skipped over it for years. I'd get to the good stuff. The heads are being cut off. There's blood and guts and swords and spears. I don't care where it was. Oh, well, it might be in here for a reason. Turns out it was in Judah. A valley there in the territory of Judah, which was David's tribe. First two verses of that chapter, David is saying, You know why I'm going to win this battle? Because this is my land, given to me by God. And you can't have my land. I have a divine right to this dirt. 
and you are trespassing. Now, if you don't know what to do with that when you pray for America, then you probably again in the wrong room. And then David, it's fascinating. He, 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 he would never refer to the giant by name. Never once did he call him Goliath. Always called him the uncircumcised Philistine. Doesn't that strike you as strange? A couple of guys are about to fight. You're ugly. Well, your mama's ugly. Well, you're uncircumcised. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> it was the sign of covenant. This was David's way of saying... I'm in covenant with God. You're not. Therefore, I win, you lose. End of story. Because when I'm in covenant with God, all of my enemies are his enemies. And all of his resources are my resources. And he fights for me. And it's not really my strength. It doesn't really matter how big you are, how little I am, how experienced you are, how inexperienced I am. It doesn't matter about how many weapons you have and I don't. The only thing that really matters is he gave me this land and I'm in covenant with him and you're not. Therefore, I win, you lose. History. History. See, it's not who gives the best speech, who controls the media. It's not really, even though it's brought curses and dislocations, the final story. It's not really what the judges have said. It's what he says. And if the church ever realizes, we can go to war with what he said. We have authority because of what he said. And we have more authority than they do if we just realize it because we're in covenant with God and they're not. And this is his land, not theirs. So then David heads to the battlefield. He does something strange before he grabs his staff. Why would he want his staff? He's not going to try to club the giant. He knows that. But he grabs his staff and heads to the battlefield. Well, in that day, men carved their history on their staff. You could take a man's staff and you could look at the pictures on there or the words and you could, you could read his life story. David said, I have a history with God. I was watching daddy's sheep and a bear came. And I made it, I just made a withdrawal on the covenant and the promise. And the anointing rose up in me. And I killed the bear. And then a lion came and I, I killed the lion. So he just grabbed the picture of the dead bear and a dead lion. And who knows what else was on that staff. But he grabbed his history and ran to the battlefield. Because if you grab your history and say it and decree it, something is released in the spirit realm for him to do it again. Again. 